He said, if the church is degenerate and worldly, the pulpit's responsible for it. He said, if the world loses its interest in religion, the pulpit's responsible for it. He said, if Satan rules in our halls of legislation, the pulpit's responsible for it. He says, if our politics become so corrupt that the very foundations of our government are ready to fall away, the pulpit is responsible for it. One day you're going to stand before God, and He's going to say, what did I tell you to do? Did I call you to preach the Word? Yes, sir. Then do that. The Bible does not say, go into all the world and change the culture. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so I want to ask you, if you believe the bottom line problem in America is sin, what are you preaching? Would you preach Jesus and Him crucified? Would you preach the gospel? Would you be committed to the Word of God? I mean, preach it without fear or favor. Preach it with great passion and power. Preach it day and night and early and late and from coast to coast and from sea to shining sea. Preach the Word. Take a stand for the Word of God. One day you're going to stand before God and He's going to say, what did I tell you to do? Did I call you to stand up for righteousness? Yes, sir. Then do that. And what we see is every attempt by a secular state to run God and faith out of the public square. Only 40% of our teenagers grow up in intact families. And within the church, it's not much different. We have to reform ourselves first. God is waiting to see whether you are going to accept his invitation to supernatural leadership in this generation. One day you're going to stand before God, and he's going to say, what did I tell you to do? Did I call you to be led by the Spirit? Yes, sir, then do that. The prescription is 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. America is now experiencing some brokenness, but we still haven't fallen on our knees and cried out to God for God to come and bring revival. It says, stand in the gap before me for the land, lest I destroy it. And then come a few of the most fatal words found in the Bible from the heart of God. But I found no one. My friends, I enjoy the fact that God has given us the opportunity to be alive at this point in time and entrust us with the future of this nation. I've come to one conclusion that becomes stronger in my heart every day, and it is that the days of legal abortion in this country are numbered. We are winning this battle. Out of this group that's here today, God could raise up fiery evangels who can take the Word of God to the far ends of the country. Come on, give God praise and glory in this house. I don't know about you, I left here last night ready to go bear hunting with a switch. Do you know what I'm talking about? Let us rise up and stand up and speak up, never give up, let up, shut up, until they take us out or He takes us up. Can revival take place in the midst of persecution? Yes, it can. Can the believers rise up when the world turns against us? Yes, we can. That's the only time I like that phrase. My friends, the workmen may be negligent in not showing up for work, but the church will be built. I'm going to tell you, you need a little group around you. Your mission is to pastor your church, but your mandate is to save this nation. And so in the name of the Almighty God, and for the sake of His dear Son, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, I challenge you to join in this battle. The forces of evil are surging all around us. They think the victory is already theirs. They believe they have this nation well in hand, but let's show them they are wrong.